Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the Now Star Freud Wellness Podcast. I am of course your host, Star Frudenberg. And before we delve into today's podcast, may I please ask if you can like and subscribe to this podcast so it can really, really help deepen its roots and really get the information out there to people globally. I'm quite excited for this podcast today because I am bringing on a guest called Abby Lashabohi, who is the founder of Moonji, which is a healthy ice cream. Right, these are two words I never ever thought I'd be able to say together, but I have been able to find this wonderful being of a person who is truly, truly um, an embodiment of her ice cream, where she's just trying to do things that are healthy, delicious, nutritious as well, and just trying to create something conscious. And this is really what I'm hoping to aspire. Well, I am inspired by her. I'm aspiring to help create more community and also a lot more awareness behind doing things consciously. Because at the moment, I would say the word unfortunately, we are living in a society that is fed on profit uh, based, uh, how can I say, profit based targets, margins, um, you know, the, the bottom line is just profit, profit, profit money, and it's not focused on people, it's not focused on planet. And as we can see, as the years are going by, the planet is really suffering, and the health and mindset of people are really suffering too, because of what you're putting into your body. So, you know, if you think about the traditional junk food you think processed food you think of snacks you think of treats I mean everything is laced with either a toxin sugar um, something that can be cancer forming a lot of e numbers in it and I can almost guarantee you most of you listening to this podcast today unless you've been working with me are not very big and avid on reading your labels of what you get in your food because if you start doing that, it's going to really scare you and it's going to also encourage you in different ways to start picking up more <clears throat> and different products and start, you're going to start putting things down. <laughs> and that maybe indirectly might save you budget if you're in a conscious budgeting time because uh, we're coming up to Christmas and also giving you a little bit of a break because it's Christmas as well. So you can sin a little. Huh? I won't judge. Um, but yes labels are truly frightening because at the end of the day the big corporations are just trying to find efficiencies cost efficiencies and trying to make their cost of a product as low as possible so filling it with as much nonsense as possible to preserve the shelf life of it um, and to make it as cheap as possible which means things are really compromised um, and whether people know it or not it's not good for you and it's not one of those scenarios and of course they're the, they're, it's the odd percent that does have it you know that people eat something and they can die from it but it's usually what we're doing is a slow and steady self-poisoning destruction or destructive behavior just one chocolate a day it's just one coca-cola a day but yeah when you compound that over your life it's scary to know what you're actually consuming you know I think from memory, a, a Coca-Cola, just a can of Coca-Cola, I think I was told has about 33 to 40 spoons of sugar alone in it. Um, and I was told that they put in a chemical that basically prevents you from vomiting because when you take the first sip, nine times out of 10 people will burp. And that's actually because your body's trying to vomit because of the excess amount of sugar that's in it because it's something your body body can't tolerate but then that chemical they put in it that's an, uh, a suppressant that prevents you from vomiting then basically creates a chemical reaction and then you end up burping and I mean that's frightening because we're just like ooh, it's just gas and the question is is it is it really right so people don't know these kind of little scary facts but this is what it is right so back to Abby <laughs> I really feel very aligned with connecting with Abby. She's very conscious. She's very connected. She's very spiritual and she's really trying to share. She's full of love. Like someone with just a, an incredible 
incredibly big heart really and just is trying to put all of that into her ice cream and I guess in anything there's no better way to or better or best place to put that in because when you leave and finish eating um, a tub of it you just go wow that's really good I feel wholesome I feel loved I feel nutritious and I feel happy and you don't have that sort of dense heavy feeling after or sugar overload feeling where you just think Ugh, I don't feel great from that like I was punishing myself but you know I really wanted to because the addict in me that's addicted to the sugar was making you feel that way right so there's lots of aspects to address you know the psychological addiction the physical sugar addiction and um, we're just trying to shift you to go on to more of a conscious path and route and it doesn't mean you have to be completely um let's call it in a land where you just have to eliminate everything in order to be healthy it is all possible right but it's just about knowing knowing the places knowing the people knowing where to go knowing where to buy it and knowing who recommends it as well so you know experts like myself go yes thumbs up go for it right so when I had Abby uh, we actually held the podcast at the clinic which was quite exciting so it was an in-person podcast which I really enjoyed and we ended up speaking more about the spiritual aspect and the motivations behind why uh, conscious business businesses should you know open why they are opening and why they're growing now and sort of the passion and love for her food as well and what motivated her in order and inspired her to create Moonji you know and I love the aspects that it has a heritage in it so there's a lot of different flavors and spices that are infused into the ice creams themselves and so it's really quite a niche uh, ice cream and I don't think you'll get it anywhere else except if you go onto a website and as well from my knowledge at Planet Organic um, and who knows there will be pop-ups soon uh, Abby basically um, is at all of the major festivals and health conscious festivals as well and you know it's her her conscious brand is really really going places so i really do encourage you to try it out and <laughs> without talking anymore i'm going to lead you into the podcast and i really hope you enjoy it and if you'd like to know more please follow um you can follow Abby below, that will be in the comments box or in the website. Um, and of course, if you need any more details, please email us directly at info at starfordwellness.com and we'd be happy to share this conscious, loving food. Right, here you go. All right, and I really hope you guys enjoyed the podcast, enjoyed the connection, and also just understanding the authenticity that Abby has expressed. Like I said, and maybe you'll agree, there are so many more questions to ask and so much more information to understand. And so there will definitely, definitely be a part two in getting Abby back onto the podcast. And just remember, if you liked the podcast, please like and subscribe to it. Leave a five-star rating. It would be greatly appreciated. And I'll catch you next time on the next, um, on the next podcast, which will be a full podcast and not the short educational podcasts. All right. This is your host, Star Friedenberg, over and out. Have a good day every, anywhere and everywhere you are in the world, no matter what time it is. And just say to yourself, I love myself, I'm feeling good, I'm ready to take on anything. Bye. Oh no. And I dropped it and it said little me. <laughs> mm. But do you like those really copper fine. bottles actually? Because I just really rate them. Well, I'm interested to, to know what you think. I just got it from a, a market last week, last weekend. And I thought I'd give it a try. You do have to clean it out. I had to clean it this morning. And then my sister was also saying that apparently copper, she doesn't know how, like, it, because Ayurvedically they say it's good to drink from a copper water bottle, water mm. from a copper mm. um, water bottle. But um, actually it's not good to have too much of it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just, yeah. I don't know. It's true. I mean, obviously, because I'm doing this work, so I've come to know about these a hundred years ago. Well, I'm so old. 
But um, I found, like, for example, by chance, I did an experiment because I was like, oh, everyone's saying drink lemon water. And then I did that in the copper. And it had this, like, chemical reaction. And when I drank the water, it, like, almost made me... So you, yeah, so because you know camber, so it almost yeah. like a camber reaction. Oh, oh, I've had that. I had um, that the other day and I didn't know what that was from. Yeah, so what I've learned is you can't put anything else but water in there. But yeah. typically speaking, you can actually, um, we need copper in our diet. From when I do nutrition assessments with the uh, bioenergetics, um, there isn't necessarily a recommended food that you can take because lots of different food groups contain small amounts and all we need is a small amount of copper anyway right okay so i think by consuming that it's too much yeah okay but the whole point i think of this is the whole idea is that you're making your water better than what you're having now okay but if you know sort of like the processes is like i tell everyone no no tap water no tap water sure yeah <clears throat> which most people are doing so like everyone's like i'm healthy i'm eating organic and i'm like tap water that's like the ultimate no-no i am so happy we are even at that point at this point doing that still yeah, dude. i mean i joke about like i think i told you this the other day how my it was quite funny because my partner was because his parents were not as open to this work and he quite forcefully introduced to it because of me but he was that. joking to his parents he's like we have very special water and they're like oh what you filter it he's like no star's got this huge crystal and it was very expensive, it was like three, four grand crystal, mm -hmm. like very, uh, basically it's a, wow. it's a charging plate is what wow. I call it. So uh, it was created by, or makes, is made by a man in Greece and he charges, he basically gets swarfs. So swarfs like all these like dust particles of leftover crystals from maybe like, for example, jewelers, if you're shaving diamonds, things like that. And then he puts it together and then um, he'll put some special geometric patterns on this plate. So it's very heavy, it's like a five kilogram thing. Um, and then obviously like the oak crystals, and if you know much about it, you know you need to cleanse them as well. Mm. So I have a glass water filter that I will put 10 liters on there to charge overnight because it needs, I, I use a sort of methodology of one hour per liter right. to charge. Then I put it through a special water filter. Um, and one of my other clients now, she actually sells special water filters where she makes them ceramic. So when the water's in there sitting, um, she says she, it's really good. I'm doing a podcast with her as well that she wants to simulate how water is when it's like under the earth. Wow, so, okay. And in the ceramic, she's got, uh, from memory, quartz crystals that are sort of built in. So then it's getting the charging energy. Amazing. Then it's filtered. I've got like a little um, altar of plants that's encompassing these water filters. And then obviously it's facing the sun and the moon, so oh there's my no God, curtain. I anyway. try this. <laughs> so this water is drastically different. So, yeah. you know, I'm very you fussy know, when it comes to water. And you notice know, you know the difference. 100%. Yeah. So <clears throat> I didn't realize I was privileged as a kid because I was only raised on bottled water. So whenever I go to like a friend's house or something, I could taste as a Difference, child. I was like, yeah. I feel like I'm eating dirty sand, I or I can thing, taste actually, chemicals. My mom would always buy for us. <laughs> but again, she we wouldn't have like it would be like the priority. It would be like we wouldn't go on fancy holidays. We wouldn't have the latest technology or anything. But it was like held first, like you know, which that's I'm, great. Yeah, very great. I mean, I mean. My dad coming from France, living in South Africa, he like completely McDonald's, like what is this peasant food? Like he was like, this is like, don't eat this, this is poison. And he tried it once and he like vomited. So then I was wow. like, wow, that's quite interesting. And also I was just having this conversation last night. It's like, he was a big, when we went to Switzerland, my partner was like, can I catch up with my breakfast? I was like, they don't do these kind of things here. And it's the same. Then it made me think of my dad's memory going like, you don't eat these condiments, this is like not healthy. Yeah. And you don't see fat people, many fat people yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Very health focused. <laughs> yeah, it's like just here in the US where that's just like, yeah. So, food systems. But this is actually a good 
into yeah. your theme, right? Oh, Which is yeah. the whole idea about what you're doing. So, I mean, mm. I always find it a bit tricky in podcasts to rehash like brilliant conversations we've organically had that I'm always like, I wish I could just bring up the microphone right yeah. now and record it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm saying that maybe in the future, I'll just sort of pre get permission and just sort of stick these nice little cute microphones on and we just go with the flow of it. Mm. Like while you're doing the session. Yeah. 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 Just in colonics, it's a bit strange. I like it. Oh, oh, just I excuse mean. the noise in the background. <laughs> with the... <laughs> or yeah, like when some people like, ooh, <laughs> baby. But maybe that part can get edited out. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I think we have a really, really great connection mm. because we connect with spirituality, with mm. medicine, and I would say, well, I assume, but I believe that both of our values and ethics is in how we do business. You want to do it with connection, with community, with care, with compassion, with love, and you're still in this sort of 3D realm of human, you know, yes make business because we need to earn a living because that's just sort of the nature of being a human but more about putting love into our products right yeah 100 percent. yeah well that's kind of where it all started for me and again we've like talked about this before and it being almost like this kind of like spiritual journey of really like asking myself these like questions of like okay like what do I want to do with my life? What brings me joy? And what do, how do I feel that I can actually be of service? And before I got the idea for Moonji, it was like, oh, maybe I could do like the conventional thing. Like I've been to uni and maybe I can go work in sustainable energy or like, you know, it was like very like, kind of like you were really conscious focus from young age right yeah and I think that's partly just again like having good influences on me like my mum and my sister who who are well conscious and you know into spirituality too um but it was actually when I went to South America and I went to Peru and then I yeah and I had my find myself moment and <laughs> where I actually had time to just like you know like no phone no social media like nothing and to just tune in to like essentially like my heart and ask like myself like what do I actually want to do and when I did that it was just like floods of creativity just sort of like flowing through me and I was like oh my god I've been denying the fact that I'm a creative like mm. it's so obvious it might be so obvious to other people yes it like, is <laughs> <laughs> like I I just for some reason was just denying that part of me and it was like okay I'm owning this and what what do I want to do and it was just I was just being drawn to going to the markets in Peru and getting all the spices and I've been traveling for I've been traveling for like about five like four months at that time and obviously like enjoying the local cuisine but just actually craving Indian food mm. um so that's when I went to the markets and I'd be like oh like oh, let's buy some cumin and like I just like find like some turmeric and like find all the spices and then I'd come back to the kitchen where I was staying and I would like make chai and I'd make golden milk and I'd like just start cooking curries for the friends that I'd made on this trip and they were just like mind blown mm. like wow this is amazing and I think that's when I was like oh there's something in this mm. like I love that it's kind of connecting me to like my family roots and my Indian roots my heritage and then also that I'm giving people like this new experience yeah so it was like the combination of like these things and then yes yeah, so this was in 2018 and then it just literally just I felt like it was a little bit of a like just the idea just basically just like dropped into my head you know when they say like you get like a download or like yeah, yeah, from yeah. your higher self almost just like <laughs> a, yeah <laughs> and I still have the diary it's like one of the because I'm such a like sentimental like keep everything like, yeah, <laughs> order in a nice way <laughs> spiritual uh, order yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I gotta keep that one because like I literally like I live with my mom and my sister and they are having a go at me for being so messy and just all things everywhere and I'm like I'm gonna use that yeah, I'm the same like I keep everything like with parking tickets bands and my partner's like we have photos on our phone and I was just like but it means something to me it's like when are we ever gonna use this I was like it's important but like sure I call it organized chaos by the way you can use right. that one too yeah I know everything, everything is everything but no one yeah <laughs> 
are you young? But, um, so, uh, well, yeah, so I had the diary and I literally wrote it down. It was like chai, like plant-based, healthy ice cream with spices. And I wrote down like a couple of recipes. And to be fair, like I did have other ideas that kind of actually came through at the time too. And it like, it's interesting how now I'm almost coming back to like some of those kind of inspiration mm. ideas now mm. after like it's been like five years. Um, so also, but, but it was that one that was like speaking to me the most at that time. And then I, I came home after that trip and just got experimenting. And again, I think I've realized like me through life is it's really important to keep that experimentation process and everyone's like oh so like how did it start and I was like well I got the idea and I was traveling and I came home and I, I literally experimented for like it was a good it ended up being eight months of being like okay I'm gonna create this natural healthy ice cream but I'm gonna do it like my own way and I, I had um, a recipe development day with a, a chef a gelato make like chef I learned the basics of like the technical stuff um and then just like got experimenting in my kitchen and then started doing tasting sessions with family and wow. that was the first thing actually i remember having a family tasting session and being like i have no idea if this is tastes good or what my family gonna think or anything and i just remember them trying it and being really blown away mm -hmm. and like all of them being like we're backing you like Amazing. go for this yeah, yeah, yeah. and I really remember being like oh my god I feel supported in, in this and I it was just so unexpected and I, I really think actually it was my family support at the beginning that was like okay well I don't believe in myself but you guys seem <laughs> to so let's go for it and do it <laughs> and then it was that following summer kind of through a serendipitous kind of like being in the right place going to an event taking samples where I met um somebody who was actually a chef um who his name's Arthur and he tried the ice cream and was like Abby this is amazing I want to sort of mentor you come to this next event the following week and I went to that event and that was when I got my first listing with with pharmacy actually which is the the vegan restaurant in Notting Hill mm. and at the time they were the they were the yeah the best vegan restaurant in London basically so it was like having that initial experience of like mm. literally making three litre samples in my kitchen and then, then taking this big kind of like risk on me and being like we love it we love that we're the first people to get it right. let's get it on the menu we'll put Minji on the menu and let's do like these four flavours and I was literally like making it in like yeah I was having I had to obviously scale the recipes figure out the logistics it was just like being thrown <laughs> into the deep end yeah. of Hello, business woman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, gosh. But I have to say, it's so interesting because like, especially those initial, those in that initial period, I was so in flow. Mm. I was so just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I've got, you know, when you like, you're not attached to any outcome because you've yeah. got nothing to lose as yeah. well. And I, I remember just coming back with this real sense of peace and presence because I've been on this retreat in in Peru and I got the idea and I just I, I felt really centered in myself and just so like I'm just gonna trust the process mm. and then it was like the magic that kind of yeah. that was created out of that yeah. um was like it was like I just don't know what's happening but it's all just like this amazing yeah and kind of experience and then yeah it was it was interesting to then notice that then I think when you start getting attached to like you know, your ego then is like, okay, I've got this listing. And then Fortnum and Mason's got in touch and then I got a listing with them. And then it was like, there was more to lose because yeah. it was like, okay, what next, the pressure. And I've very much experienced the kind of, the opposite of flow, getting out of flow, like things going wrong. And but I think it's all part of the- Growth, growth and learning. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, do you feel comfortable talking about the retreat? Sure. Yeah. And plant medicine. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't tell people how amazing it is, and everyone's like, "All you just do is vomit and look <laughs> bad," and I'm like, "Are you removing all your blockages and all these things?" Mm. You know. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting because obviously now, especially, I think like just co like you know collectively, everyone's now thinking like searching for something in terms of what can I use to heal or help, and I do. 
I think we everyone's got their own thing that suits them and it's very mm. much like figuring out what works but like if I think about how plant medicine has been such a pivotal part in in this journey like it was the whole reason it's the whole reason why I'm like sat here right now mm. so yeah so when I was in Peru obviously people talked about doing ayahuasca and and and, and I think very much like I think at the time I was a bit I, I you know I, I didn't I guess I I wasn't it wasn't calling me so I was just like okay I'm not I'm not drawn to doing ayahuasca however I had a friend who I really trusted actually a family friend back at home and he said Abby I went to South America and I, I did Wachuma the, the cactus San Pedro yeah, yeah, yeah San Pedro yeah and I had the most incredible heart opening experience doing it so if you get a chance I really recommend doing it so that was always like in the back of my mind and again it kind of happened really serendipitously because I was traveling with a friend for three months and then she left and I was in Peru on my own and I all I knew um what we were in I was in the capital in Lima and all I knew is I wanted to go back to the mountains because mm. we'd gone to Cusco we'd done lots of trekking and I was like I just want to go back there like there must be a yoga retreat or something that I can do and I just I looked on Facebook and I just messaged a few people and one of the retreat centers I'd messaged was a Wachuma San Pedro retreat Amazing. center yeah. and they were the first people to reply they I literally was just like I'll come I'll volunteer like yeah. <laughs> just any work is there any work in, in, in as an exchange and they replied straight away and then I literally got on a plane the next day and went straight on my own and it was like he he literally um you know he wasn't a shaman Sergey. he basically is this Russian Israeli guy who basically come to Peru and like um met his wife and had this beautiful you know it really changed his life basically like you know do that you know being in ceremony with um san pedro and he just wanted to he wanted to create that for other people so it was very much just like you go on your own journey i'm not mm. i'm not leading it in any way but we start off in ceremony together and then you know we just go out into nature into the mountains and sort of have our own experience mm. and when I got there at the time, there was only two other people there, and then as I stayed over the month, the people would come, yeah. and it would be nice because it was just like you know, obviously meeting new people, having this experience with them. Um, but it was like literally like a cactus house. Like you walked in, and we were like just staying in this house, and there was like all oh, the San Pedro growing, like right, like and then <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, but it was so beautiful, like in the mountains, and just like you know, being on in ceremony and like swimming in the river, like having this, being in this like ice cold walk, like, wow. yeah, 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 it was really, um, soul cleansing, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh. And I think the thing is, is again, there are so many layers to healing and I, I just really realized I'd like been blocking and denying so many parts of myself. And I was still really, I was really young. I was like, I think I was like 24 at, at this point. So I was still, you know, still at that point, I think, you know, it was just the right amount of like shedding that I, I like was ready for mm -hmm. in a way. Um, and I just, the, the biggest thing for me was that it just, it was so heart centering. And I had, you know, I'd meditated, I'd done Vipassana, I'd done other stuff, but it was like, it was, like it was just this incredible it just the way it managed to just accelerate this feeling of like oh my gosh i feel so in my body and, and mm. present and then just allowing whatever it need that needed to kind of come out to kind of yeah to come out so there was the space to welcome you back in right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was like just like though i was just like writing poetry it was just like streaming out of me you know? <laughs> never written anything about, about it wasn't anything too <laughs> deep or like but it was just the enjoyment of like oh my god I'm I look at that tree and I'm inspired to write this poem so I'm just like <laughs> I'm sure the tree was very proud of myself. thank you very much <laughs> it was so funny and then yeah and then obviously I got the the idea for Moonji and then yeah um I have I have to say like it, yeah plant medicine really does have such a place in because it's like 
especially in our day-to-day -day, like life where it's just the craziness and the the, the hecticness and that I always think that you know you can reach these states naturally like if you have a rigid yoga practice or if you've got your meditation practice but it take that takes time it takes mm. doing yes. an hour every day being really disciplined Just and i think that having that is amazing and i've been through periods of my life where i've i've i've, I've had the luxury of being able to do that oh, because okay. pandemic i was like got really into my yoga practice and stuff but it's like when the people like you know it just has this fun like this way yeah, of yeah, just yeah. It just hits, it's like the anchor that just goes straight to the point. I always explain to people, I feel plant medicine is like treating your mind as a hotel and drinking the medicine or consuming the medicine is creating and giving you keys to the penthouse you always knew you had, but you didn't know how to access it. Wow. It, yeah. It's like, I'm an analogy person, but that's yeah. the best way. And, it, and it's just trying to reiterate it's always within you, but people lack the understanding on how to access it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is just a tool, a resource to help you get there. Because it's, it's like, a, you know, different medicines are a mother energy or a grandmother or a father or grandfather energy. And it's in that right if you want more feminine or masculine. Because I always say there's Team San Pedro and there's Team Ayahuasca people. Really? There's not often people who uh, prefer both. Oh, it's always like one will be there towards the other. So I'm Team Aya, yeah. <laughs> Team Grandmother. You know, maybe in your case, um, you know, which humor might be yours. I don't know. Wow. You've done both, but um, but it's it's very it's the same story for me. Like Canva was the first medicine that came into my life, mm -hmm. and you know it was still to this day interesting because before the first point even came on to me, I mean it was like about that close. I was already purging. So it was just, you know, re-familiarizing wow. myself in this life about all the lineage. Right. right, right. And the shaman that I work profoundly with, he uh, said to me that seven lifetimes ago, I was a great grandfather serving the medicines. He's like, this oh is like very recent and it's connecting you. Wow. And that's why I love it. But that's so powerful. That's always how I, I, I feel like a sense of safety and like a sense of like, because I think, again, you know, even though at the time it was quite unknown, I, it was this feeling of like, oh, I'm, this still this familiarity, mm. and even with with mushrooms as well, I just I don't know, I, I've never I've never really felt a sense of fear or no. it's always been like they're my they're my friend, they're here to help and yeah, yeah. and to heal. Whereas and and I I have always thought that it, that could be connected to a past life past life experiences, um, with plant medicine, but then with you know say for example with my mom or my sister there's like there's a lot more fear there and there isn't that resonance with it so it's like oh, it's so interesting how i'm this. like go on guys <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've, I've sort of deduced is that one person in the family will be you know the black sheep so to speak right. because you're completely connected but i believe you become the healer in your family lineage you're trying to bring change wow. or lessons or influence or just planting seeds and you might not be successful in this life but you know whether you can or cannot consciously remember in the next lives you incarnate in you know those seeds are going to start getting watered and then little sprout will grow and then you know then they start to become the power of influence and they're like you know maybe i'd like to try you know or you, it's just how it works like i used to be a chartered accountant and i knew deep down inside i wasn't aligned i moved here and then i started meeting people and i was like wow this is amazing like people do this for jobs and get paid this is crazy like people can talk about this is not black magic and that's what's so just, inspiring because like yeah. yours you i just look at you as such an inspiration of somebody like in their purpose and like living oh that God, and so I'm the so journey that, that's the journey that you've been on like is is the, yeah it's it's so the, yeah because i think to myself now I could still be an accountant. I, yeah. So, but it, it was my story. I was like, there's always this one defining moment. And I was like, I was working 16 to 18 hour days. I had like, I was doing five people's jobs because they're like, well, this is a new role. You know, like maybe we'll try it out. You know, we fired two people. So oh maybe we'll see if you can do it. And I was working half the year, half the UK. And I just remember one night, like I was so engrossed in the computer. And then I was like, oh, I think I need a break. And then I like looked up, it was like 10.30 then like there's automatic light sensors so i like moved and then all of a sudden the lights came on and i was like 
this doesn't feel normal. I'm living for work and I can't do this. I was like, I love people and I'm staring at a computer all day. And I was like, this is, I was like, I need something Some now. Yeah. And then I bumped into someone, this was a whole long story, but like who ended up being a camper practitioner. And I was almost, and I genuinely say this to people, I was in a suicidal mindset. I was like, I'm not in a good place. Like, I need change. Like, I need it. Like, I don't know what else to do, but I can't be doing this now. And I ended up going to, <laughs> like, a party at the Troxy. Um, and then it wasn't necessarily a sexual attraction, but there was this guy whose frequency I just was very strongly drawn to. And I kept seeing him throughout the night. And at some point, I walked up to him because he looked like he wasn't well. I was like, are you okay? And he's like, no, like, I'm an idiot. I've just taken mushrooms at a rave and this is not going well and I don't know what to do. And people always ask, how long have you known you've been like a healer or, you know, mm -hmm. inclined towards it? The answer is always my whole life, right? But I didn't know at the time. But then some voice came over me and was like, lift your hands into a triangle and put over your chest and just go, Obviously, I'm like, sure, <laughs> I don't know, like, I'll do it, that's weird, like, I'm thinking of every witch movie that's, like, come across my mind, I'm like, yeah, like, Charmed was my favourite, too, um, and then he's like, whoa, what did you just do, and I was like, I have no idea, and he's like, I just saw my dead grandmother, so I'm like, is that a good thing, <laughs> and he's like, do you do plant medicine, do you do this, I was like, I have no idea what this is, and he's like, well, I'm a camber practitioner, you need to do camber. And I was like, this must be my... I was like, sure. He stopped. Without yeah. hesitation, I wasn't like, what is it? Will I die? Yeah, like, it was all the like normal this. questions <laughs> I get asked, I was like, let's do it. You know, and then within a week, I've done it. And like, I rem I recorded my first session thinking I was so like, like, I looked at myself being like, wow, I'm so happy. Like, my life has completely changed. And I'm like, wow, like, that's a zombie woman. You look, and now I'm very animated and very, and it's like, you know, how much you're dimming your light, or yeah, like dimming yourself to, yeah. But just tying back in with what has happened, I just want to keep reiterating to people because people come to plant medicine like, it's gonna fix me. I reiterate, it helps you and assists you, and like what you've said earlier in your conversation is yes, you've got the ideas, plant medicine shown you mm. and given you inspiration, but you still went home and spent eight months. Like that's commitment and time and energy and effort and lots of things that could take you out of flow state. Things, obstacles can arise, but but as as it always should, things will flow. And it's about when things are not flowing, you need to stop and ask why, mm -hmm. right? Oh my god, a hundred percent. And it's that grounded, it's that groundedness, isn't it? Because mm. I think it's so easy, especially in the spiritual community, to be like, okay, or the next thing, or I'm gonna go next month and do my therapy and whatever. But it's oh, like yeah, the chase, the, yeah, the being attached to like to needing to needing to do that in order to kind of like mm. continually, yeah, I guess yeah, chase basically. The chase, the, like what I noticed is. Um, I forgot what this festival was called years ago. Uh, I forgot the name now, but it will come to me later. But with my partner at the time, because he was a holistic practitioner, I, we kept going to festivals and then we'd do these intensive, like traumatic, like, like trauma releasing workshops. Mm -hmm. And I'd see these people like, oh my God, my life has changed. Like I'll never be the same again, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like very, like, I'm very naive. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah, I was yeah. like, my life has changed too. This is incredible. <laughs> and then I go home and I start doing the homework. And then the mm. next festival, then you start to notice the community of people, and then they're coming up with the same trauma. And I was like, when wow. is this thing ever going to be healed? So then I was like, people are getting addicted mm. to just going to workshops and, in a sense, validating like, oh, I've been to a workshop. Like, I'm doing the work, but are you really right? And that, that's something that's sort of come up to me. And it's the power of the medicine is, the, this is like, I call it like an alien intelligence because it's something that the human mind com can't comprehend. And it's like every time they show you a lesson, you need to go home and do the homework. So integration. Because you're not going to get your next piece until you'll be shown wow. in a different way. I mean, this is my, my experience yeah. and experience with people I work with. but. It'll be like, if this is your lesson, you're not working on it. She's just going to give you a new movie with the same theme. So it's like, 
I think like enough of you cannot cough, pass, go. Okay, again, like, <laughs> yeah, up, like, yeah. So you you got to beat the level. bus before you get to the next yeah. level. And the box is your trauma, your theme, or show some essence of working on. Um, but yeah, then otherwise people, anything is imbalanced if you do it too much or too little. And too much of a good thing can also be too much. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, again, I think it really just comes back to like this, like we're living in the, the 3D and I think um, like av avoiding like reality, it's almost like a like an avoidance, like, you know, response to being like not, you know, almost es escapism yeah. and, and yeah, not yeah, wanting yeah. to be here. And I think actually because um, we do a lot of wellness festivals and things, which actually I've, I've mentioned and I meet loads of people and they reflect. It's nice to have like meet customers and then them reflect nice things mm. back to me and actually there was the a gorgeous couple um at a couple of festivals that we did and turns out they live quite locally to me and they just messaged me like we need ice cream <laughs> um, when can we come over to your house and pick up some <laughs> so they came over and then we ended up having a really nice kind of conversation and um uh, the the guy he actually um runs his own business and he was just was really impressed with just the whole operation and everything and how I was sort of managing it on my own and he was like you know it's really impressive because in the spiritual community people get all these ideas and they mm. say they're going to do stuff but they don't actually commit and mm. do it yeah. and and I'm I, like sometimes I'm so I, I actually you know you focus so much on the things you're not doing and where you you know you think you should be mm. but actually to just stop and be like okay you know, it is impressive. Mm, even you know, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you so. hear. <laughs> <laughs> I want to celebrate you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's so it's it's not it's nice again. It's almost like the universe dropping that like that message in him to mm. tell me to just remind myself that it's like actually you know the conscious business is like actually how we're gonna create change because it's yeah. like we're in the world when we're in you know we're like you know for example with, with moon g figuring out next steps whether it ends up in waitrose or ends up but that's like consciousness kind of getting into these spaces and to me that's how we're gonna help you yeah. know race you, you gotta know. be the change right if no one made a difference then there would be no influence to make a difference so just you start then that creates the mm -hmm. knock-on effect someone's like oh yeah i have this idea and then they start to do and by default it just grows it's like almost like veganism like i say like mm. being south african like a few years ago i go back to like what you eat rabbit food <laughs> you know wasn't such a thing but when i went back a few months ago all of a sudden there's like one or two plant-based meals wow, or, yeah, you know yeah. a little bit more you know vegan focused or the like i know it's not the best thing to mention but the beyond burger has mm. like reached there and it's like you know its roots are starting to stop, you know, start spreading. Um, and that comes through people like you, you know, in a sense, just going like, I have an idea, not going like, oh, all these big like conglomerate companies are just like, they've taken over the market. There's no space for me. You just got to believe in yourself and just put it out there. A hundred percent. And the frequency, 100%. which we always talk about is you putting your literal frequency, your heart and soul into it, the love and compassion. And I think that's what people taste, right? Mm. Or feel and taste. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, I think when we first met, just because of how intuitive you are, and you said to me, well, you're, you know, you're, you're a healer in a sense, and you're putting that healing energy mm. into, because I think, so we're all, we all we healers. All yeah, healers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I love that because I think actually like I was battling a little bit because you can get so into like, again, I guess the business sense of like, okay, how do we scale and how do we, you know, the grow and like sit on the, the, the financials or, or, or whatever it is, but to just come back to like my why. And again, it's like really feeling like needing to be of service and really needing to wanting to create positive impact. And to just be like, okay, like it's putting healing energy into food and helping people, you know, be healthier and still have a treat, but still do it in a way that's nourishing to them and helping to kind of raise consciousness in that way. And, you know, we again, we talked about how like that's meat up against the food industry that is, you know, you could argue is actually <laughs> Poison doing industry. the opposite. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, actually, 
what I'm doing is significant and yeah. it does really have importance. And I think, yeah, like coming back to your why and this like self belief piece is so, so key as well. And so much of, you know, I'm still very much, it feels like in the beginning, you know, yeah. even though there's been so many chapters already, I'm like in the grand scheme of things, it's still so early on. I'm still growing, I'm still. You know, I'm still figuring out, so needing to figure out so much, but it's like it, the, the, the growth and the learnings that I've had in terms of just this, you know, since start already has just been huge, you know, way more than if I'd been sat in a job, you know, I would be working one in one, you know, department for one company. Like it's just, it's actually, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, it's almost because it, I, I told you this last time I don't know, for the camera, <laughs> but you know, because I'm also trying, I'm so I eat meat, I'm sorry, yeah, not yeah. vegan. I try to be vegan, but for health reasons, I sure. can't be. But yeah. I do try to avoid dairy, I try to avoid gluten, except basically, <laughs> I feel like veganism should have gluten free as well because it's almost like that one <laughs> thing they should just put it in there because I've always been like, is this be oh wait, is it gluten free? Blah blah blah. But my partner trying to support that uh, went and bought a box of cornettos. I told you the vegan cornettos. Oh, yeah, oh my god! <laughs> so obviously my I've said so I've been raised really on good food. Dad being French, so that's really really helpful. Um, and another weird thing is when I had COVID during twenty twenty one when I caught it. Uh, more trick, isn't it? Um. My I lost my taste buds and my smell. Did I tell you this for about? No, oh my gosh, it was oh. traumatic. So about six months, I lost my taste and smell. For like six months. Yeah, like the average individual, like three four weeks. So yeah. I just remember that one morning. I made. Uh, I was in an Airbnb shepherd's hut, like in the middle of nowhere. It was incredible. And then I made a coffee. I had a coffee that day, and I realized how much of a foodie I am. Mm. Right. So I drank the coffee. I'm like, ah, life is good. And then later that afternoon, uh, we made chicken. And then I remember cutting and eating the chicken. And then at like a minute later, my brain was like, wait, this feels like I'm eating rubber. And I was like, something's wrong with this chicken. And I could literally observe myself trying to pull from my memory bank the flavor of chicken. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> I think I'm not going to Oh no. Right? Then, yeah, yeah lost taste of sense That's so sad because it was so, oh, I'm God. such a foodie as well. So. Oh, I'm really depressed. I was like, yeah. I'm a hedonistic person. I love like things and enjoyment and pleasure. And I was like, I feel like a sense of myself or a sense of identity is just being gone. Mm. Right? Like, just, and you know, when it's six months, you're like, this is never going to come back. But oh, yeah. Whether you want to say this is a gift or a curse, but since I have, has things completely restored? I don't know, but I have taste and flavor back. Mm -hmm. But I have a heightened sensitivity now that as soon as I put something in my mouth, it tastes like chemicals. I can taste the pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, wow. preservatives. So literally, I cannot just put something in my mouth. Like, which is a shame, like the biggest thing I harp on about is like salary juice diet, like medical media and loving his mm. work and his thoughts, it's things I've always innately felt and believed and received from, you know, up above. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I love him because he just like, no Western medicine, this is not acceptable. You guys are like 20 years behind in your understanding and this is you, blah, 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 right? But anyway, side note. So I was like, a vegan cornetto. Give it a try. Oh, like, give it a go. Love, love me a sweet treat. I literally bit into it and I was like, Bleh. like this is disgusting. Sorry, couldn't say <laughs> But like, I was like, this. I was like, what the hell is in this box? Mm, it would be better for you to have just the normal cornetto than the yeah, yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. I'm coming to a place now that veganism has been so corrupted by the big uh, food industries that actually it's much better to go for dairy rather than yeah. vegan full fat rather than low fat yeah. like your body needs it and it's like um even gluten free it's like i say to people sure why don't you just try avoid it in its entirety it's, oh gluten free it's gluten free but and it's like you've got to think about the chemical processes these things are going through to strip the, yeah. the certain food or ingredients out 100 percent. So, it's the processed amount of it and also they've even shown that it, and obviously it's dependent on whether it's you know what your reasons for doing like 
for being gluten-free are that they've shown even with gluten-free bread like the glucose spike is like higher apparently yeah, than yeah, just yeah, normal yeah. bread yeah. but this is also where it's like you know both i feel like both of us are still on the same page of like just questioning everything and like trusting what your gut your intuition and your, your body before mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. being like oh veganism is the next healthy thing so i'm just gonna buy all the vegan food and be healthy but it's like i, I feel like you know when when veganism started and and there is obviously still a massive group of well majority of vegans who you know pure it, intentions it, yeah, yeah pure intentions and as soon as like anything get big enough it's like then it just feels like it's co-opted by yeah. corporations who just want to make money yeah. and it's like oh actually you know how can we just make it taste good but then just put anything in it and all the rubbish and that that was another big why for me because it was like okay well i love you know ice cream is something that's usually quite indulgent and quite unhealthy and then also the vegan space as well which i think at the beginning this is also the great thing i think because now people are more you know people do eventually educate themselves and do want to make healthier choices so i think now like you're saying people are realizing that just because something's vegan doesn't mean that it's healthy and i think when i was back in 2018 when i was obviously like beginning my research for moonji I was just looking at the ingredients decks of like all the vegan ice cream that was out there and it was like majority just water sugar um like maybe um, 0.2% almond or something and yeah, yeah, plums, plums. yeah and then like gums like guar gum carrageen and and all this stuff and I think I, I personally feel like if you're having this stuff in moderation I think that I don't I don't see you know everyone's different depending on how sensitive you are on these things but I just like it can't be good having all of this stuff that's processed like in everything you eat or like you know if you're if you're somebody who is avoiding dairy and and so I think I really looked to kind of brands like Plenish yeah. and they're very good yeah, yeah very good. I even went to a food like um conference and I met the founder and I was like please can you help me like I just need to make this ice cream without gums and anything and she actually put me in contact with a food consultant who then gave me some ideas for what to use instead and then that's actually in my current recipe so mm. again it's like if you are sort of like stick true to you know your I think it does pay off in the end because mm. people appreciate it and I've had so many you know points along the way where I'm like okay I feel like it's ready to, I'm ready to scale and get to the next stage but then you know partnering with factories that then want to compromise on ingredients and things like that and I've just I've had to say no because it's just not felt like the right thing to do so um yeah it's it's but, but the good thing is is that actually when I do the wellness events and I for example medicine festival which is like highlight of our year it's just the best festival and I keep being like come come next <laughs> year <laughs> um it's literally like I love I just I'm the happiest at medicine festival <laughs> um and we just we do so well with sales it's just and it's such a good kind of playground for like just trying new flavors and seeing how like all of the stuff I did a special every day and that was great in terms of feeling my creativity and then like the specials were the first ones to sell out every day wow. and we had people coming back and people just being like you can feel the like you said the love the good energy um i had one lady say that it was the only thing she could eat at the whole festival that actually she could feel was like lifting mm. her up um so then that makes me think okay i am you know i just gotta grow slowly and not mm. try and jump to the next level and compromise on things like i really get how people value you know the the intention and what the purity mm -hmm. of it almost of what i'm doing right now so it's like okay how to how can we just do this and you know get to the next level but do it in yeah in, in a way that mm -hmm. retains all of that yeah and i think it's just quite helpful because if i recall you've said in a conversation as well about like a family member liking ice cream and they're not being able to for health reasons mm -hmm. and that sort of was maybe let's call it the subconscious seed that's been planted about like how can we make something still accessible for some people mm -hmm. who can't um i don't know if you want to sort of extend on that yeah well i think i don't i think it's interesting because i don't know if it's it's, it's i think it's like a number of factors isn't mm -hmm. it like we had 
my allergy tests that we did and I realized I've got all these intolerances and allergies to things that I've been unaware of and especially with the colonics now I feel like I'm way, like just more sensitive to like the food that I'm I'm eating and I think I don't know if it's just just even collectively like because of the toxicity the pollution or just everyone's becoming more sensitive and I think if you look at like the trends of like you know again like nut allergies or um dairy allergies it's just like it's just increasing and increasing and i think yeah it does come down to the fact that people are becoming more sensitive and also because of just the kind of like living in in the city and living in like a toxic environment and so that was also a thing for me um uh, another why of being like okay i want to create something that's healthier but it would be great for it to be for people who yeah who who you know don't eat you know who aren't able to eat ice cream because of allergies and for mint it's so funny because obviously we do all the spice infused like chai flavors and mango lassi and like those are all really popular but we i do um i do a, a mint chocolate chip which again everyone's just like oh it's just a mint chocolate chip but like everyone's like no it's like the best <laughs> it's the best <laughs> chocolate chip <laughs> and i had so i get so oh, many <laughs> i get so many vegan people saying to me i haven't eaten mint chocolate chip in like five years and then just like watching them enjoy this mm, mint yeah, ice like, cream <laughs> and you know coming back probably putting on a different outfit or hat on just to look like they're not buying tenny <laughs> yeah i've had a lot of people be like this is the best ice cream i've ever had and yeah it, and again it's just that that's then like kind of fuels me to be like okay I got I do have to keep going like there is you know I am you know um kind of making a difference in, mm. in, in, that, in my own way so and just for iterating on that you are healing your own right because I say I say this to everyone and maybe it's just good to have it on here as well it's like I am a healer doing healing work sure but like mm. that's a healer but contextually speaking a healer is anyone right so i say you're mm. like putting healing through your food musicians through their music mm. chefs through us of their food or actors through their emotion you know a hundred percent like how what is your signature frequency that you're trying to connect and emit to yeah. the world like yeah you know um you know if that is through doing a count great you know it's not just a creative thing or it just might be you're the best mother um you know to your family that's like completely perfect right and it's just sort of mm. if you feel that nurture and fulfillment in yourself then right. you're doing the right thing right. you're in a state of flow isn't it yeah, yeah i i love that 100 percent, and i i always say like a similar thing and i it's interesting because it's like it doesn't have to necessarily be like the, your thing that you do to make money at all but I, I definitely do think there is something around like having a something that like you said that is you know i, I do strongly feel like everyone's yeah got a purpose and a reason mm. for being here i actually so i don't know where i read this but someone someone told me this i don't know if it yeah like, or yeah, I, I heard like a speaker say this, like a spiritual speaker, that said that everyone has a message or everyone's got something, a, like something to share. Mm. And there's like at least 250,000 people in the world that are like, will resonate with this message. Like at no, least yeah. that many people. Good number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, wow, like, wow, that actually every human has the potential to be able to like, to do sure. that and to reach mm. that many people and to have that level of impact. So I thought that was yeah, yeah that's really great. interesting. That means yeah. you have a whole new perspective on things if you think like, because I always feel it's such a shame. Like I have this big no no about the school institutions. Mm -hmm. Like when you're seventeen, you're like you have to go to university mm -hmm. next year, and what do you want to do? And you're like, uh, I don't even know who I am right. as a person. Yeah. Um, and I really wish like people would do a lot more investment in children's understanding of their personalities, their characteristics, their inclinations towards things, because there's so many people that get caught in that a conveyor belt in the system and then they just have to go to jobs so they can pay their bills. And there's so much lost art and talent and gifts and creativity right. to um, as a result of how the system works. And right? that, that just commodified everything because like, that's the thing, another thing I feel quite passionate about. Like, we're all creatives, like, mm. we're all born to 
you and like that doesn't have to be like painting or music or it's just like we're all born to be creating something mm. like you know whether it's a business or whatever and like the growth that comes with that and the the joy that comes from the process of that and and i i just think yeah like for me actually a big part of the piece of me rejecting my kind of felt like my identity as a creative was being at school and like really like having these ideas that for like art GCSE and just not having any of them like mm. kind of appreciated mm. or valid to like mm. you know mm. and it was like I just remember being really frustrated being like I've got this you know the like I've got all these ideas and even at <laughs> for my GCSE art I like did this klimt style gold buddha like wow. yeah and I, like I <laughs> And I had this whole like, you know, vision behind it and it was like surrealist Kemp's Buddha like art. Oh. And you know, it just wasn't no like my teachers just didn't get it. They just were just like, you know, do this do this instead and you'll yeah. get a better grade. Draw the apple, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think I'm saying this because I was teaching yesterday, um I always had in my report cards that I'm terrible at problem solving. And I think this is my best talent. I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And you intuit. Oh it. my gosh. But still, I mean, gosh, and I'm old now. Like, it's still sitting there. Every time I, I successfully yeah. do something. Yeah. Like, and people are always like, wow, you're so, like, you're really good at problem solving. And I'm like, I know, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know how I'm good at like these people much, but, but it's the, still, like, fighting this belief system. And I'm like, but it tells me I wasn't in an environment that I was thriving in, mm -hmm. so therefore I wasn't rising to the occasion. And it's the same thing about now, like, how much lost art and effort is it? Like, because we don't yeah. nurture people in the right ways, and then it's like, what kind of society are we creating? Right, 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 right. And I've really, a big thing for me as well, I've realised, is that actually, like, change making and it's it's gonna happen through people initiating themselves into like mm. their their mm. creative energy as well um because you know i again a big part of like i guess for me it was accessing that part of, of me and a, a big part um i also practice kundalini yoga which mm. we talked about and that's very much talks about how like the shakti energy that's like in the base of the spine and when you raise that kundalini energy through Different practices or how are you doing it it's that creative force and it's just that it's just probably just stag two stagnant mm -hmm. in people mm -hmm. who actually when you you begin to work with these energies and you actually raise it that's when you then have the like you know you, yes. you, are, you just want to like draw and paint or sing yeah. or whatever and it's like we're all singers and we're all like you know I, we're and just all children <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah yeah basically it's coming back to back to that like yeah um but especially again being at um Lenson Festival and just being around all these musicians and really getting how like again like we were saying the healing that is being done through the, you know through their music it's so profound because I'm just like you know I could go to a talk and listen to someone or a workshop which is like could be equally as profound and like get having my mind engaged but then I can also have this beautiful experience of like listening to someone's music mm -hmm. and actually feel mm -hmm. have like a more of like a heart-based experience of what they're talking about do you know what I mean mm -hmm. so it's just like the power of creativity and like I really just feel like that it's just going to be yeah such a you know healing healing kind of mm -hmm. you know here for people so yeah so yeah. how do people get access to you and your fantastic ice cream that we've oh. been punting about <laughs> <laughs> probably there's going to be lots of orders now oh yeah. amazing so so like i said we we supply independent shops and sort of health supermarkets so the big the most well-known place to find us is planet organic and um, they've got some stores dotted around um central london and then I say, if you go onto our Instagram, which is uh, just we are Moonji. Um, and how do you spell that? So it's we are, so W-E-A-R-E, -E, and then Moonji, which is M-O-O-N-J-I. Um, I've got, we've got a stockist tab where you can see the different stores that we, um, we stock. We do also sell a little bit online, so 
um, got select flavours on there, so we do have a website too. And then we do a lot of events, wellness events and things. So I always say the best thing is to just like follow us online on social mm -hmm. media and then you know, you can follow the story and, and sort of then also see <laughs> where, where we are. <laughs> yeah, next summer, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be coming to help you with your biohacking one, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, so and figuring out how to get stopped at Amsterdam as well. Oh, but yeah. so <laughs> even though we can't do the one this year, I'm like, no, we have to make the biohacking summit next year in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, it will happen, it will happen. <laughs> but you see how it's just flowing for you now, isn't it? Beautiful. Well, I, yeah, I think in the sense that actually I've really realised, like, in terms of what brings me alive is like, like you're saying, meeting people and being around, like being in, in events. I just really love them. So like, being in places that light me up and then just meeting the right person and then like just trusting that like the flow of like that getting to the next thing so i really again appreciate the fact that okay fine i'm maybe financially not where you know i'm like i would like to be right now or like even financially with business but it's just the places and the people that's connected me to mm. has just been i mean it's priceless really yeah, yeah, yeah. and like being at this biohacking summit and just meeting people who are like you know at the leading edge of what they're researching in and learning the latest you know all all of these things that you know it's just and then also i was at the harvest summit which i'll tell you more about um last weekend and i was with gabo Mate and yeah and listening to him talking and africa brook do you know her yeah, and yeah, yeah. So and uh, Louis Schwartzberg, he's the director of Fantastic Fungi. Like it was oh just like gosh. Lily Cole. Like I was, and it was just it was a really intimate thing, and it was just I had the, these moments of being like, okay, even if I financially was like became a you know overnight success millionaire businesswoman, like yeah. I would be paying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would be wanting to come here to these events. Yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. I'd be doing, just creating more of these moments. So mm -hmm. it's like, I'm just incredibly grateful that the business is just, the ice cream has put me in like these mm. places. And then also feeling like, oh, what are the next steps? But like just being in those environments that are then like fueling kind of like inspiration for like whatever that next step might be. So amazing. All right, Olivia. I don't know how long we can talk before probably like more than an hour, but it's perfect. I want to thank oh. you so much for coming on and you know being the first in the space yes. as well. It's, it's really good. Good. Yeah, yeah, I'm very honoured. Um, and yeah, I'm sure probably there'll be lots of comments and follow-ons about this, and Great. people ask questions, and maybe I really believe in you and what you do and your frequency, and I know if this is who you are. I'm can't imagine like you know the kind of healing you were doing subconsciously into the people that are getting a hold of your amazing amazing ice cream thank um, you so much and personally coming from a foodie to make something accessible conscious delicious mm. and somewhat healthy mm. which obviously those two shouldn't go together but if you can it's like <laughs> next level right oh um, thank so you it's really really great yeah thank you but, i have so much love for you honestly <laughs> i feel like it's just been so nice to just come here and connect and like the conversations we've been having to, like to have it on camera like you were saying it really is. yeah <laughs> it's there but it's not <laughs> yeah okay so we wind it up here so thanks great. everyone so, okay cool. thank you <laughs> And I am your host, Star Frudenberg, from the Star Freud Wellness Group, consciously empowering your mind and body through wellness.